Were you always interested in fashion? Probably not. I mean, there's... I used to kind of be... I always used to be very much into everything creative. Um, and I used to, when I was at school, I used to love my art classes and things like that. But um, I was never... It was never something that I kind of thought when I was like very young, this is what I want to do, because I don't really think that I knew um, that you, you know, that you could do that. For three summer, for three summers when I was 14, 15, 16, I was part of the costume department of the National Youth Theatre, so you know, they taught you how to make garments, how to use a sewing machine and all of those kind of things, and that sort of, in my head, made me think that I wanted to do something or look into something like that a little bit more in depth. Um, and that's, I kind of definitely knew that I wanted to move to London after that kind of experience, because it's kind of a kind of a world apart from what I knew. Um, and then and then it was actually a Sunday, I think it was a Sunday Times magazine thing about um, the day in the life of um, Louise Wilson. Um, this has gone back quite a while actually, but it was kind of when I was about 15, 16. Um, and I don't know, I mean, I'd never heard of St Martin's before and I never really, um, never really heard of doing fashion as a degree before and then kind of read this story about this kind of amazing woman who's done all these amazing things and has these, um, you know, fantastic kind of alumni of the college and kind of started to look into that and then that kind of became my goal um, to do that. Um, I kind of got the bit between my teeth and sort of made it my thing to do that. Um, and it was, you know, it was, it was, it was a toss-up for me, uh, for me, at the, right at the end actually, it was kind of a, it was either between doing um, sculpture or doing fashion and I figured that, um, you know, with fashion I could do both, whereas I feel to a certain extent, which maybe sounds a little silly, but doing sculpture would sort of have maybe he's um, restricted me a little bit. I think it's quite interesting that you were coming out of a theatrical background. Certainly some of your earlier shows were really about spectacle. Yeah. How important is spectacle to you when you're designing? Not necessarily when I'm designing. I think it, it's sort of, um, you know, the, uh, for me it's kind of been sort of a big transition um, going from like a 12, 15 outfit show where nothing's for sale, that we all, we make everything in London, to doing like a 350 piece collection that's produced in Italy and it's sold like worldwide. It's kind of like a jump and I'm still learning very much about it, but um, you know, there's a, there's, it's kind of, um, it's kind of a, it is a big transition and it's very difficult, I suppose, for me to sometimes get into the mindset um, of, doing that because you know I always have to have kind of an end goal in sight and it's very difficult for me to not think about the show um, but it's not really all about the show at the end of the day it's about the clothes and um, and they have to kind of function as clothes and they have to sell well and in London it was all about the show so that was kind of the most important thing whereas now it's kind of um, you know, it's, it's, I never feel like I can ever do what I really want to do when it comes to the show, because, you know, and again, I was at this Browns dinner last night and I was talking to a few people about the way things are and, you know, gone all the days where a huge company will throw like half a million at a designer and say, do an amazing show. Um, maybe they'll come back, but they're not, you know, these aren't the days. Um, and, you know, to do something especially with the live fashion show, you can do it with film um, and you can do it with kind of a lot of other mediums but with fashion, with a live show, especially in Paris because there's a lot of red tape and health and safety and you, you can't do that. Um, you have to have a lot of money behind you to be able to do something so I feel a little bit that what I do in Paris is kind of very stripped back which is maybe is a good thing because it's kind of, that's what it's about, it's about the clothes and you know the clothes kind of have to be the theatre themselves. I'm not talking. I'd, you know, I'd, I never. I've never been a fan of catwalk theatrics. So, um, it's it's more about it's more about the clothes kind of speaking than sort of um, anything else. 
your first kind of out of college show was at Cash Point. Do you think that influenced your designs? Do you think it made you push them further coming from this club background of dressing up and well you see that has a problem with that because we like you know my my group of friends like me and Katie who's my stylist and Matthew who does my music and my friend Hannah um, we all used to go to places like that um, because it was about the getting ready it was about like being together and sort of making things and you know it was kind of we used to have like these every because cash point used to be on a Thursday, so a Thursday was like it's a bit a day. And we used to go around the house trying to find things that we could make into like a hat or, you know, it was kind of it was you know it wasn't about the because a lot of people used to go to places like cash point to to network and to be seen there and um, you know we used to turn up we, <laughs> we turned up a couple of times where it was so late it actually shut. Um, <laughs> It was like the journey, like the, you know, getting ready at home and then getting there, drinking on the bus and then kind of standing on the street and um, it was fun and it wasn't about the club and I felt, feel a little bit detached from that kind of, you know, like club scene because we didn't really sort of integrate ourselves into that. It wasn't like, a, it was a place for us to just go out and have fun, really. Um, and. I think that maybe that element of fun certainly did has made it into my work, certainly my earlier work, and I still think that some, a lot of what I do has got a bit of a sense of humour, it's just you maybe don't get it so much anymore. Um, but, um, so yeah, I think it's that kind of, um, it's, it, especially with when I first started the show, it was bas and because it was just about the show, it was all about kind of like a freedom or, um, like I say, like a sense of humour, and um, so I suppose that's what I took from that whole sort of thing, because it is quite funny. <laughs> um, there's a lot of characters, and, and also that's an interesting thing, is that um, when I used to design, because I used to have, as I said, like 12, 15 outfits a show, um, it wasn't like necessarily like it was a collection it all sort of went together but it was more it was more designing characters than it was designing um like um a whole like fashion show you grew up in sunderland yeah which if you don't mind me saying isn't exactly known for fashion design mm, um, no <laughs> <laughs> but i find it quite interesting that a lot of your first collections were quite focused around that kind of heritage. Were your first few collections sort of autobiographical? Well, it was very much my thought that um, I didn't want to do something that um, I didn't have any knowledge of, so I didn't want to sort of go, I'm going to do a collection about this, um, and choose something that bore no relevance to me and that I would kind of have to sit in a library and kind of do a lot of photocopy and it just felt a little bit kind of fake to me to sort of you know talk about or talk through my work about something that I didn't know about and I've tried to sort of um, you know sort of kind of maintain that um, with what I do. My first first collection was about Sunderland and it was about the fairground you know Sunderland's kind of a seaside town it's got a, a very dilapidated fairground and it was all about the idea of um, you know, um, this girl turning into a fairground ride. Um, so, you know, she comes out on this peacock. <laughs> um, you can see the pictures anyway. She turns gradually into this kind of, she morphs into this kind of big, it's supposed to be like the, the, the red and white thing is actually kind of supposed to be, you know those octopus rides with the like tentacles, you know, it's, it's, a, um, it's something that I'm thinking maybe is about going back to looking at because there's a lot there that, um, that you can use and it's nice to sort of uh, have the chance to sort of revisit things. I come back to the graduation collection but I can look at the collection you just showed in Paris and that yeah. we shot the other week and it's very three-dimensional. A lot of the time kind of transforming people into these abstract shapes. Yeah. Do you think that idea of transformation, there's always a kind of transformation mm. in your shows I see a show and it's always they've but always been changed fashion, into that's something. That's what fashion's about, though. No, it's like you put on you put on a jacket and it's kind of it 
or you put on a pair of trousers and they make you, f or you put on a pair of shoes with a little bit of a heel and it makes you feel different, or you put on some makeup and it's kind of, um, it's kind of, you're transforming yourself from something that you are to maybe something that you want to be or something that you, you, you know, that, that you haven't been before. And I think that, you know, that's kind of the crux of, of what we do. It's kind of, um, it's kind of selling people a dream to be something that they aren't. I don't think I make things to complement your lifestyle. <laughs> you know what I mean? I make things to um, maybe make your lifestyle a little more interesting. I think that's maybe the difference between me and some other designers. Um, What's next? Where do you want to take Gareth Pugh? Man and the mm. label. <laughs> um, that's a good question. And again, something that I don't really think about a lot. Um, but, um, I don't know, I mean, I'm thinking about um, how I can do things differently because I'm getting a little frustrated with showing my stuff in a fashion show. I've always thought that's been like a tennis match and I really understand the importance of them and I really, um, I really um, know that I would never be able to replace that kind of magic sort of feeling of the wind of the model walks past or the sound of the shoes on the floor. Um, I don't know, there seems to be a lot of, um, you know, especially with, you know, yourself, your studio and Nick, very um, sort of um, an air towards something new um, with fashion shows. Um, but I have a problem that it doesn't seem to be um, being embraced as much as maybe it should be. Um, and I know people are trying for it to be sort of accepted as a um, as, as something um, interesting, but I I I still think that the fashion show is always going to be the is, has always been the crux of it. You know, like when McQueen did his live streaming thing with Nick, um, it was a show first and foremost. Um, Burberry did it, um, and it was a show. Um, I feel that it maybe is a little um, old-fashioned, perhaps, to, um, to, I don't know, for me, it's like uprooting my whole studio and team from London, taking them to a whole other country, and um, kind of betting my life on everything going to plan, and my fashion shows you know, they're all, every, everyone's fashion shows always fraught, but mine seem to be kind of, <laughs> um, kind of the pinnacle of fraughtness. Um, and it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me when you really step back and think about it, um, to bet that whole six months like, as a designer, you have to live by those images of a fashion show um, on perhaps unreliable dresses who put things on wrong and you know if a model walks out and something they're like shit it, the pictures are going to look terrible and it's not how you want to put your stuff over as a, as a designer. The thing that I didn't realise is that the image that you put out it's not the show it's the image from that that people take it's the you know it's the style.com thing that everybody sees you know the, I forget that there's like three four hundred people at my show and then the rest just see it online um, I think it's maybe as important, or maybe it's more important, especially with um, how visible everything is now, to reconsider how I present my thing. Um, uh, yeah, and whether that I don't, I, I haven't quite decided if it's if if that's going to be something that I do now, or if I have to kind of think about it a bit more, but. Um, yeah, I'm kind of interested in that at the minute, and that's kind of what I want to work on. Because I think there's a lot of scope for, for it, and I think people are ready for it. I just think people are kind of scared of breaking, um, you know, the fashion industry and fashion shows are such a big industry, 
and a lot of people depend on them and um, you know there's a whole thing that goes with them but I just and I'm, I'm, I certainly don't want to take myself out of that I just think it's um, it's I think there could be something more interesting when I did that video with Ruth um, um, which was instead of a show um, sort of a live catwalk show it was it kind of I mean I never thought about it I don't think any of us thought about it before but you know we did I don't know how we did it but we did the video and the looks for style.com pictures all on the same day and you know that gave us kind of like a week to go through all the pictures sort out the running order and you know like if there's a fastening on a pair of trousers that kind of doesn't sit very well or you can kind of tweak them all and airbrush them and make them look really beautiful and really how you want the clothes to look and you just can't do that with a fashion show and you know the you don't even get to see them before they're kind of launched online and everybody's got access to them and it's and I get it it's kind of the difference between stage actors and movie actors um, and how there's a whole um, sort of um, respect for that live element to it but I it's it's I think it's again finding a balance between the two um, and so yeah kind of deviating a lot from your question but no. that's um that's the new thing for me that I want to try and do and whether it's now or whether it's later it's just I think um, I think uh, it needs to happen and I think people want it to happen, I just think people are a bit scared. <laughs> so, we'll see. <laughs>